we want to find the Taylor series for f of x equals e raised to the power of x centered at c equals one, and then we want to give the first few coefficients c sub zero through c sub four. The Taylor series is equal to the summation from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f evaluated at c, where it's centered, divided by n factorial, divided by the quantity x minus c raised to the power of n. Looking at the expansion of the Taylor series here on the right, notice how these first two terms are not in fraction form because when n is zero, the denominator is zero factorial, which is equal to one, and when n is one, one factorial is also equal to one. So for our function f of x, the Taylor series would be equal to the summation from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f evaluated at positive one, divided by n factorial times the quantity x minus one raised to the nth. So when n is zero, we would just have f of one, plus when n is one, we have f prime of one times the quantity x minus one to the first, plus when n is two, we have the second derivative of f evaluated at one divided by two factorial times the quantity x minus one to the second, plus when n is three, we have f triple prime of one divided by three factorial times the quantity x minus one to the third. And to find c sub four, we have to find at least one more term, so we'll have plus the fourth derivative of f evaluated at one divided by four factorial times the quantity x minus one to the fourth. And of course, this continues. And now for the next step, we'll work on determining the function values f of one, f prime of one, f double prime of one, f triple prime of one, and the fourth derivative of f evaluated at one. Well, because our function is f of x equals e to the x, and this function is its own derivative, all of the nth derivatives, in this case, will all be equal to e to the x. And therefore, f of one is equal to e to the first, or just e, and all the derivative functions evaluated at one are also e to the one, or just e. So simplifying the Taylor series, we would have f of one, which is e, plus f prime of one, which is e, times the quantity x minus one, plus f double prime of one is also e, so we have e divided by two factorial, or e divided by two, times the quantity x minus one to the second, plus f triple prime of one is also e, so we have e divided by three factorial, which is six, times the quantity x minus one to the third, plus the fourth derivative of f evaluated at one, again is e, so we have e divided by four factorial, which would be four times three times two times one, or twenty-four, times the quantity x minus one to the fourth, and so on. We can stop here because we now have enough terms to find c sub zero through c sub four. C sub zero equals e, c sub one equals e, c sub two equals e divided by two, c sub three equals e divided by six, and c sub four equals e divided by twenty-four. So again we have e, e, e divided by two, e divided by six, and e divided by twenty-four. Now a lot of times when we, a lot of times when we find the expansion, a lot of times when we use this formula here to find the Taylor series, we'll notice a pattern and we can rewrite the formula in a more simplified form that doesn't require the derivative function. Let's go and take a look at that on the next slide. So again, looking at the Taylor series that we just found for f of x equals e to the x centered at x equals one, since all the derivatives evaluated at one are equal to e, we could rewrite this series as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of just e divided by n factorial times the quantity x minus one to the nth. Now before we go, let's compare the graph of f of x equals e to the x 
and the polynomial function using the first five terms of our Taylor series, which would be called the Taylor polynomial. So we could say that t sub four for the degree four Taylor polynomial used to approximate e to the x would be equal to e plus e times the quantity x minus one plus e divided by two times the quantity x minus one squared and so on. So when we use a finite number of terms from the Taylor series to form a polynomial, we call this a Taylor polynomial. And let's look at the graph of both of these on the same coordinate plane. F of x equals e to the x is graphed here in blue, and our Taylor polynomial is graphed here in red. Remember it was centered at x equals one, and notice around x equals one, the red Taylor polynomial is a good representation of the original function f of x graphed in blue. I hope you found this helpful.